Mbaki is one of this country's most celebrated rockers. He's performed for over 25 years. 25 he doesn't look a day over 25. Oh, that's incredible. Last week, Diesel released album number 13. He's here now. So, congrats on the new album. Congratulations. How are you feeling, mate? How are you? Good. 25 years. That, that remi so, I've <sighs> known you now 23. Something like that. 23, yeah. 24 years. Because I, I think I was 16 when I met you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to age you, but I just yeah. turned 40. So, right. so let's go back to the late 80s. This You're performing true. with Barnsley. Your poster is on the walls of every teenage girl's bedroom. And Apparently, yeah. <laughs> Apparently what are your, they were. Did you enjoy that time? Oh, look, it was, um, things were happening so fast. And when, when you don't have anything to gauge it by or you, you haven't had any previous experience, it's all fresh and new. So it was, yeah, hectic. I can't believe what, how much happened in one year. Like, 89 especially was a crazy year. And it was when you changed your name, wasn't it? Well, I, I, the band was named after the bass player. And I'll, I'll always have to explain this. The bass player's name was John Dalzell. We, it, we had no name and we thought we needed a name, so we made up a name based on his name, thanks to a friend of ours who made a joke. It all started with a joke. And um, I was told by my manager eventually, before we made the record, like, you're going to have to go along with this because everyone thinks it's you, you're in the middle of the stage. Everyone and thinks you're Johnny. That's how naive I was. I yeah. just didn't assume that. So that's how I got stuck with it. And then when I went solo, which is after that one album, that's when I th just kept the diesel because it just seemed like You changed logical. your name by accident because of a joke. That's not even your name. It's yeah, just a joke name. I know. That's how these things start. The, the like irony was there was two legitimate Johns in the band. <laughs> the drummer and the bass player. And yeah. then they've just yeah. left behind with you. Now, uh, so when you changed your name and you, and you did that, because I remember you, were new, you left here, it was huge after Head Fidelity, you went to New York, you started afresh with a family and you decided to start again and, and go back to your original name. Uh, did that, was that confusing? Was that a big jump for you? Was that a, a real a let, well, letting go of something? It was a bit yes and no because I'm so used to my name. So sure. So to, to come up with a solution for the record company at the time, they, they, these massive billboards all over Manhattan with the clothing company that was, and we've been seeing it down here for a long time, and mm -hmm. they were just starting to attack America and, you know, other market, other companies were dropping and blah, blah. So um, they said, well, what are you going to do about this? And I, I could see what they were talking about. I thought, well, I'm not going to come up with another name at this point. So I said, can I use my own name? They're like, yeah, great. And that was it. Until I came back here and people were hearing the song, I think it was Dig, it was yep. all over the radio. and. People like hearing it and going, you know, oh, that sounds like Diesel. And then they'd hear it was Mark Lazotte and they'd go, oh, I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> <laughs> what a rip off. Yeah, who's that, that guy? That guy's a rip off. Yeah. Man. Diesel impersonator. <laughs> now, you've got your new album, Let It Fly. Yeah. Um, and it features a duet with your daughter, Lila. Um, what was it yeah, like? Yeah, well, we didn't call it a duet. It's just, uh, I just said, can you sing this part here? Because I didn't want to scare her. You know, she's a like, good singer, though. Oh, she's a great singer, but every I thought Christmas if I said she, she's, duet, been record, she's been giving us like CDs every Christmas that they've been producing. She'd run, know. run away screaming. Like, no way! So you've got to be careful. You That's know. fun, oh, isn't she's it? To be able to sing together. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about letting her go into the show business? Because she's uh, look, Lily is. For those who haven't seen her at home, she's a beautiful, beautiful girl. Yeah, she's um, got beautiful she could do soul. anything, this kid. Uh, what do you beautiful think about soul. if she gets into showbiz? Is that going to freak you out? Um, no, you know, I think. You just gotta, you gotta love it, and I see, I see that she does love it, and that's all, all that matters really. Because I think, yeah, you know, David, or anyone that's been in showbiz, really, you, at some point you realise how much you love it, or you don't. Mm. And I think when I moved to New York, and when you know, got really cottage industry, and had to go in and slip my CD under people's doors, and wait, wait for the call to get gigs and things like that, putting up my own posters with my own staple gun. You know, things like that, and I thought, wow, I must really love this. Yeah. I must really love to play. As soon as a lady, you have to knuckle yeah. down. Because, yeah, I mean, at some point, you, you, just, you just don't eat that many toasted sandwiches in a Tarago if you don't love it. That's right. <laughs> I, mean. I love toasted sandwiches, <laughs> Pierce, and Tarago. I like Tarago's. You get a lot. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> you, you do. You know, it's a carnival now, anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So talking about, you know, your daughter going into showbiz, your parents weren't so keen on you going into a band, were they? Um, they were a little bit. I think, my, well, my dad played, but he always had his other job as well, and he was in the Navy, so it, was, it wasn't just a full-on music career. So when I just, yeah, dropped out of school and just went into playing three or four nights a week, they, they freaked out a little bit. Yeah. But now you've recorded a song with your well, dad? Well, yeah, a few years ago, I got my dad into the studio, and it was a great thing to have him in my workplace, and I could boss him around, tell him, no, you got to, you know, play that. <laughs> it's, that was a beautiful thing. I think... You know, the thing about a son and father thing, there's no, no beauty, beauty, better sort of trade than notes, I think, because sometimes words just don't do it, you know what I mean? So it's really a beautiful thing. To be Tell me about it. Sometimes in our family we just don't have words, it's just <laughs> screaming. Um, look, you're about to go out and tour. The album's out now. We can find you everywhere. You tour, you tour relentlessly. You, I you, love touring. I love, and, and, you know, it's, 
Same as it always has been, I think. Before we even made a first record, we toured a lot. And then yeah, when we did that first tour with Jimmy, that, that I was doing two gigs a night and doing gigs in between the week. Tony Grace, my agent, has been for 27 years. I think, yeah, when we came to Sydney, we were doing nine shows a week. So that kind of, uh, I, I use that as a measuring stick. Whenever I say, oh, I'm